All right, here we go again. Did you hear me say at the end of the reading there, the gospel of our Lord? Did you hear the good news this morning? <laughs> yes, no, maybe. It was a little bit interesting. And if we take last week's look at where the landowner, the vineyard owner, right, was God, right? That's what I said. He sent his prophets. They killed the prophets. He sent more prophets. They killed those prophets. And then he sent his son. So if we carry that imagery over in today's lesson, then God is now the king. And what did the king do when the people killed his slaves? He sent his army in killed them all, and burned their city. Does that sound like something we want our God to do? Probably not. And if we actually follow through on this story and look at it, we see exactly how ludicrous the story actually is. Because, right, the king sent his servants out. The people said, we're not going to come. He sent more servants out. They killed them. And then he sent his army out into the streets to kill those who had killed his servants and set their city on fire. And as the city is burning now, he sends his servants back out into the streets to say, gather anyone else who's left and bring them in. So the city is burning and the king is throwing a banquet. Does this not strike anyone else as odd? It just seems a little strange, crazy to me. It's just... Where do we go with this? And the interesting, there's a couple interesting parts here. We'll get to one of them a little bit later. But the, one of the interesting things here is the thing that the people say to the servants, right? People had been invited to this wedding banquet a long time ago. The king knew his son was going to get married. He was preparing this feast. He was ready for it. He sent out invitations. Those who had been invited, he sent his servants out to, to say, it's time to come. And they said, in our reading, it said they wouldn't come. I think is what it says. That word is not a good translation there. That basically what they said is we are not willing to come. It's not that we can't come. We're not going to. It's not that I have anything better to do. It's just that I want to not go. They're not willing to go. The word here in the Greek is means willing. It means that not that they can't come, not that they have more pressing matters, but that they're not willing to come. They just don't want to go. The same thing is what the first son said a few weeks ago, right? When the father went to his two sons and said, go to the field and do what you need to do. And the first son said, I'm not willing. He said, I'm not willing. It's the exact same word used in our reading this morning. I'm not willing to go. I don't want to go. They're not wanting to come to the banquet that the king had invited them to shows they did not see the invitation as an honor or a privilege. That they thought they had better things to do than to come to the king's banquet. Which leads to the question, what are we not willing to to do for God. But on to the next interesting thing in the reading. We get this reading, right? He sends his servants out. They kill the servants. He goes out. He burns down the city. The city's burning around them as he's putting on this banquet. They invited all these people in. And then the king himself comes into the banquet hall and he sees one member of this gathered group who's not wearing a wedding garment. Now, this may not seem like big news to us, right? How many of you have ever gone to a wedding before and seen people dressed in a bunch of different things, right? We don't all wear the same thing when we go to someone else's wedding. It's just not what we do. In Jesus' day, however, they would all wear a white garment or as close to white as you could get, depending upon how much money you had to make the garments that you had white. So you would wear as close to white as possible. And if you didn't have something, you would go and borrow it. And the fact that the king says that my feast is now ready does not actually mean that the feast was actually ready. It means that the calf and the oxen had been killed and that they were being cooked and that preparations were well in advance that the feast was going to occur sometime in the near couple days. Because wedding feasts in Jesus' day were not just one night long. They were weeks. 
or more, you celebrated the fact that the couple got married. You had a wedding feast that lasted for a week or more. So they would have had time given the invite, right? That's what my first thought is when I read this. He's like, this man has just been pulled in off the street. He's sitting here at a table. The king comes in and goes, what the world, dude? Why don't you have on the right clothes? And he says, you just pulled me in off the street. I didn't have any time to go change, right? That would be my first thought to that is, I'm not, I didn't have any time to go home and put on proper clothing. Maybe, maybe not. But for such an occasion as this, you were supposed to wear the expected clothes rather than, rather than your ordinary clothes. They were longer gowns normally, and as I said, they were white. And if you couldn't do white, you did as close to white as possible. Or you borrowed clothes for these festivals, right? You went home and you made sure that you were dressed properly. To wear the wedding garment then is to honor the king and his son. If you chose to come without the wedding garment, you came because you knew that the king was going to give you a good meal, right? I mean, you can probably guarantee it. The king's got lots of money. He said there's oxen and fatted calves that have been killed for this. So it's probably going to be a good feast. And if you're poor, it's probably better than you've had in a while. So you're going to come. But to come and not wear the garment is to come because you know you're going to get something good from the king. But you still don't show the honor and respect that is necessary to give to the king by not doing those clothes. And I just talked about how it was a garment that's longer than normal. It's supposed to be wide. If you're poor, you may not have it. Maybe you could go and borrow it from somebody. However, there are some scholars and there are some people that will say it may not have just been people who had to get their own clothes. Maybe the king himself provided the clothes for the people who came to this banquet. The host of a banquet could supply the garments needed for someone to come to a banquet. Just the way that we give these fine people that sit over here robes to wear for worship in the morning, right? Right? They're all wearing these fine robes because they were provided for them by St. John's, right? Not because they bought them themselves or they went out and washed them. Well, some of them might have. I can't say that for certain. But they donated them to St. John so that they could be used by choir members to come as well. So even if they purchased it themselves, it was because it was to be used as an outfit for worship in this place, provided for them. So if the king provided this, and there's biblical witness to this, 2 Kings chapter 10, verse 22 talks about how the king provided robes for all who came to worship. Genesis 45, verse 22 talks about Joseph supplying clothes for his brothers who come to visit him in Egypt as the king. Esther 6, 8 through 9 speaks of the king providing clothes to the one who he is going to honor. So if the king is providing the clothes for the person, the person has no excuse not to be wearing what was provided for them, right? Unless, of course, they are thinking that they do not need the clothes that the king has provided for them and are just fine the way that they're dressed. Which could lead us into a whole discussion of what's the proper thing to wear to worship. Right? I think that's a stretch for this verse, and I'm not going to go there. Because the fact that you're here is the right fact. The fact that you've come into God's house to worship him is the place that you need to be. And it doesn't matter what you've worn to come in here this morning because you're here. Exodus chapter 16 verses 10 through 13 talks about God clothing unworthy people in beautiful garments. Right? That's what we're going to see happen up here this morning. Not to say that Nora is unworthy, but all of us in fact are unworthy, right? And this morning at this font, she's going to be clothed with the gowns that Christ is going to give her because of what he did for all of us. All of us have been given a gown to wear by God in our baptism when we were named and claimed, chosen by Him. And Ezekiel chapter 16 talks to us about that. So if we refuse to put on these gowns, these garments that God has given us, are we saying that we are beautiful enough on our own that we don't need God? You see, that's where that last line comes in. For many are called, but few are chosen. 
because many are called. And I can actually say, and I will say, that I don't think many are called. Everyone is called. Period. God extends His grace to everyone. I think that's very biblical. Everyone is called to come to the banquet feast. But now who is admitted to the banquet feast? That's not for me to decide. That's for God to decide. And I think it's those who can only admit the fact that they need God. Only when we admit that we need His love, His grace, His forgiveness, His presence, and yes, His clothing that He gives to us to give us to cover us in, are we chosen. Not because of what we've done, but by our acknowledgement of what He has done for us and our need for Him. None of us can make it through this on our own. We all need God and we all need the people sitting around us. And when we say that we don't need any of that, that's when we walk away from the garment that God has given us and we're the ones sitting in the banquet feast that God's going to come to and say, my friend, why are you not wearing the garment? Why do you not wear what I've given you? So clothe yourself in what God has given you to wear and honor Him in everything in your life and everything that you do. Just like Nora is going to be given a gown this morning, named and claimed, accepted as she is, to come to the banquet feast. Just like all of us are. So wear that garment, knowing that God is always with you, walking everywhere you go, and be ready to come to the banquet when He calls in everything that we do, here in this place and outside of these walls, as we show everyone the love and grace that God has given to us. Amen.